Good morning, folks. We're going to hit some events, alerts, aesthetic pieces, awesome science, and catastrophe. We continue to see that bright active region on our star, so let's go to spaceweathernews.com, where in fact that active region still has no sunspots below it. We also still see the coronal hole swinging through. The northern opening here will hit Earth with solar wind late in the week, while the departing coronal hole had its stream impact yesterday. It was tremendously weak as streams go, couldn't even crack 500 kilometers per second, and it has waned back already, leaving geomagnetic conditions peaking inside of calm range and heading back down to the floor. So folks, those storms we warned of in southern Europe are pounding away. Venice, still in flood emergency, and a landslide slash avalanche in Austria put a tree into power lines, lit up the snowy scene in an unreal manner, the entirety of the circuit arcing down along the tree. The top weather event of the last day, however, took place in Christchurch, New Zealand. Tornado tore through midday and tore roofs off several buildings. Few injuries, but luckily they were minor. We are going to Japan for the last Earth alert. Mount Shimo is on watch after increasing seismic activity at the volcano. An eruption could be coming soon there. Let's start the science with a pretty shot of NGC 772. The key feature of note here is up top where it looks like the spiral arm structure is breached and the pattern outward breaks into a bit larger bend where the interior arms begin to crash into it. They say that the much smaller NGC 770 smashed through this galaxy not long ago, and this is the result. The great spiral structure disturbed. Up next, we're looking at the lesser appreciated aspect of solar blasts coronal mass ejections, where they say that in most cases, they are detecting superthermal electrons counter-streaming through the plasma field. So when the CME leaves the sun and races out to impact the planets, there are powerful electrons surging back towards the sun. Up next is a nod to the ongoing problem in modeling Earth's magnetic dynamo. They say that the field dynamics not only for Earth but on the Sun are not going to be able to perform the dance that current mainstream models have them doing. There is something else at work making the effects we see and this is critically important because Earth is in the midst of a magnetic excursion. Now many of you know the last full Kron magnetic reversal of Earth was over 700,000 years ago. But the shorter excursions occur much more frequently and still contain that dangerous minima of field intensity. This paper is diving into a number of the excursions in the last 100,000 years, shows why many will not show up over the entire world even if they are global reversals, but more importantly, we get a peek inside the timeline goofs. For example, the Le Champ event some 40,000 years ago shows up strongest here. On the bottom panel of the two, the current drop in field intensity is on there, as well as Gothenburg, and what appears to be either Mono Lake or Lake Mungo, but between where we think it should be, and there should be two of them. Here on the left, we see Le Champ, Mungo, and Mono Lake. On the right, you can see those three and Gothenburg all the way to the right, but again, the timing is off with one at 17,000 and 12,000 years ago. None of these dozens of charts in the paper are really showing the same thing, or the ones you can find in the rest of the world. But one thing is for certain, all of the charts that do go up to the present show what's happening now. Indeed, in many ways, the event unfolding now is the most severe in the last 100,000 years. It was likely that bump up in intensity the last few tens of thousands that paved the way for this planet to be such a benign host for us. Not for long, as we're on the long way down. I was spending some time yesterday reading more about the warped current sheet in our solar system, and once again contemplating the galactic trigger of our star. As we see the Sun's version of a current sheet here, please know that it ripples, not rides the equator. Crossing the actual equator is nothing, but crossing the current sheet is a dense, electrodynamic system magnetic reversal. Now on the Sun, that's the heliospheric magnetic reversal, but at the galactic scale, it would be the galactic reversal. And again, nothing happens when you cross that imaginary equator. It's the actual rippling electric sheet separating the magnetic sectors. The main difference between the galaxy and the Earth scenario is we are very close in to our star relatively and we see only one or two ripples of the Sun's current sheet before it gets here. But out at the Sun's distance in the galaxy, we are firmly within the ripples. 
Folks, they got all of this information about Earth's catastrophe and what triggers it into the Pentagon in the late 40s as the OSS became the CIA. They covered up the truth of what was going to happen. We are right now in the early stages of the next great catastrophe cycle on Earth, and it is indeed a cosmic disaster, with the sun and galaxy as the sword and the hand. In our film, Cosmic Disaster, which can be found below the video on our channel page and at suspiciousobservers.org, we go through all of that evidence of the event, of the cover-up of the event, and of the ongoing secret plans to handle what's underway already. The universe is going to attack. Folks, we greatly appreciate your support. Website membership is the number one way we keep this free program alive here on the net, and it gets you 52 podcasts a year and 100 extra videos a year explaining the science in deeper look style. We've got wind map forecasts and shots of our star to close. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 5.05 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.